Architects of Change Live. These are conversations with change makers who are moving humanity forward. And uh, that is a perfect description of the two women who are joining us today. For sure, for sure, are moving humanity forward with their work, with their voices, with their stories, and which is why I'm so happy to be kicking off uh, our week with the two of them. And we're going to talk about mental health today, so please sit down and really give them the time and the attention that they deserve. Talinda Bennington is here with me and Barbara Van Dalen, and they have come together uh, under the umbrella of the campaign to change direction, uh, which is to get us all talking about mental health, to make it at kitchen tables, at workstations, all across the country with kids, with partners, with siblings. Uh, this is a, a, an issue that is close to my heart, that I'm passionate about. And you and I met, actually, we haven't ever really met, but we met through <laughs> social because I told a story about uh, talking to my son about your husband's passing. And uh, you tweeted me back or yes. something. And uh, my son said, that is cool, Mom, that she <laughs> tweeted you back. Oh, and I was thinking that was cool that <laughs> you mentioned me. <laughs> oh, well, I just thought it was so wonderful. And so talk to me, uh, to Linda, about first I want to know how you're doing and how your family is doing since your husband's passing. Thank you. We're OK. We're It's day to day, um, but we're OK. We have such an amazing support group of our family and our friends. And this is a huge support to my entire family. Mm -hmm. um, so we're okay. It's, it's hard. You know, we have our ups right. and downs. Um, and we just, we talk about it. That's what's important, though. We so that's what we're doing and today. And that's what you were just saying, because I said that last night in anticipation of this interview, I started talking about mental health at the table with quite a few young people all in their 20s about what are the warning signs about the work that you were doing about your husband. And you were saying that that's really what your hope is, that that conversation is at kitchen tables, Absolutely. dining mm -hmm. tables, and that it yeah. wasn't in your home. And now people think, well, your husband was so famous. He's the front of a such a big, successful band. Why wasn't that a conversation at your table? You know what the first thought that comes to my mind is that he it was, we were just victims of our time. And what I mean by that is that our culture surrounding mental health is, is shame-based, it's fear-based, it is um, something you don't talk about. And my husband um, didn't like to talk about it. it. He would, he would talk about it. He would express himself in music. Yeah. He would express himself in interviews. But at home, like normal stuff, it, it was, wasn't always just, it wasn't okay to really not be okay. And, um, and it didn't come from anybody in our family towards him. It was just how he was. Um, I can attest to that if I'm not feeling well, even now, even now, I'll be honest. You know, um, it when, like how you just asked me, are yeah. you, how are you doing? Yeah. I have to take a breath and remember to answer honestly and not just yeah. say, oh, we're fine. You yeah. know, um, and that's, that's something that's changing within myself. So um, I'm here just, you know, to humanize the fact that um, this conversation needs to happen, mm -hmm. the fact of um, what happened to my husband, um, you know, and, and yeah. What I thought was so uh, brave, really, of you was to put out the video that was your husband a couple hours before he took his own life, and you said, this is what mental health looks like, somebody who's mm -hmm. laughing, playing right. games, and then a couple hours later can take their own life. Right. And I think that was really, uh, for me, that was a teaching tool in my own home. Thank you. That was a teaching tool to say, look it, you can be laughing one minute or you can have something up on social media where your life looks so great, but that's not the whole story. Mm -hmm. And right. do you see that you've Absolutely. been in this work now, uh, Barbara, for a long time, and I know you came together to work together mm -hmm. to unite your voices. And you talk about the kind of five signs mm -hmm. uh, that we should all be aware of when it comes to mental health. You gave me the little card. Yeah. Let's talk about them. What are the five signs? If you're a parent out mm -hmm. there, if you're the spouse, uh, the sibling, what should you be looking for? So we, when we put this together three years ago, and then Talinda and I met this past fall, the idea behind the campaign to change direction is exactly as Talinda said. It is to change the culture. We know the signs of a heart attack. We know the signs of a stroke. 
up until this point, there's never been a public health focus on let's know the signs that someone is in emotional pain. This isn't about diagnosing, it's not about labeling, because as you said, Maria, this is a very broad space. Yes. Why it's so broad is because it is part of the human condition. Just like physical health is broad, yes. we, don't, we don't think twice about that. You know, whether we have a broken leg or a pulled back muscle or a stomach issue or whatever, it's all in that spectrum. Right, but that, like the five signs that you talk about, which I like because you can talk about your hand, yes. right? That's a visual reminder. But I did them last night at the table, and I said, these are the five signs that you're talking about. And my son, who's 24, said, well, they're kind of broad. Yes. How do I know if someone's irritable? Right. That could just be a day-to-day -day thing, right? Go. Let's go through okay. the five signs. So the first one is personality change. Right. The person's not acting like themselves. Okay. The second one is irritability or agitation. Could be anxious, could be angry. The third one is withdrawal, meaning they withdraw from their typical social interactions. The fourth one is they're not taking care of themselves their physical appearance, they're eating too much, they're not eating, they're not going to the gym, they're not, they're driving too fast, drinking too much, and the fifth one is hopelessness. And those five can apply to a range of issues, that's the point. What we want people to do is to reach out, connect and say, I see this, how are you doing? How are you really doing? I love you. I'm concerned about you. Have the conversation. So I think this is also particularly, as my son was saying to me, kind of hard for men who aren't often you know, used Touch to talking, or so that, mothers yeah. to talk to sons, or spouses to talk to their husbands, like, hey, how you feeling? Fine. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, how, I noticed that you're kind of irritable, stress. Yeah. So how do we go beyond that? Would these five signs have helped you? I think the conversation and the five signs would have definitely helped. Mm -hmm. um, it would have, anything to remove a shame or a stigma or um, you know that to just to be one that we're we're all in the same boat here that that you know Chester's mental health was um, something I didn't understand I didn't understand my own until I began this journey and that's really powerful that so, is powerful let's pause a second what what Talenda just said is really powerful mm -hmm. that she didn't understand her husband's mental health, nor did she understand her own, until you really started becoming an activist, and that's what you've become. You've used your story uh, actively to spread this message of mental health and to change direction. What do you think would have been different had you, would you have been able to start a conversation with your husband that would have gone under the surface. I'd like to think so. Yeah. You know, I don't I, I don't know. Yeah. But I would like to think so. What I can tell you that has changed is is this conversation happens in my house with my older children. Um, I have I've been blessed by having a beautiful big blended family and we talk about it. Um, and it's it's become more normalized. And with my little ones, it's really become normalized and you know, they, they their best friend is their therapist, and which I think is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, my my twelve year old son says says to me things like, "Mom, do you need to take a minute?" Like if I have to look at Chester's pictures or something, and I'll be start becoming irritable, and he'll he'll bring me back around to, well, kid, to kids, language, is, having the tools, yeah. the so language. If you need to take a minute, yes. uh, asking somebody, I've noticed yes. that you seem withdrawn. Yes. Do you want to talk? Absolutely. And you, you asked about men. Mm -hmm. So the work that, that the organization that I founded that led to this, right. Given Hour, we originally provided free care to veterans. You can't get sort of a tougher group of men who don't talk about these things. Right. DOD, the Department of Defense, and the Department of Veterans Affairs have both adopted this. And Talinda yeah. was just with us. We had a signing with the UK Ministry of Defense. They're adopting it. I think what, and what we're hearing in communities Knowing these signs gives someone permission to say, hey, dude, you can blow me off, but I've seen you. You're drinking too much. You're not treating your wife well. What the is going on with you? And we're going to post these, uh, a picture of these cards, which I think is really good. You can put it. It says, know the five signs, and it's very... Um, you know, clear here. And, and I think, you know, it's part of, as I said, this larger change 
changing the direction, give an hour I thought was really interesting, which is the umbrella organization. I don't want to get it complicated, but it was people mm -hmm. giving an hour of help mm -hmm. to people who are struggling with mental health. And yes. you could take that even if you're not a professional, right, and give an hour as Please. a friend. Yes. <laughs> give an hour to yes. have a conversation, yes. right? right? This yes. is, a and to understand that maybe you have to keep having this conversation to change Don't direction. Don't give up, right? Don't give up, if right. you see somebody, people typically know but they're afraid, they're uncomfortable, and what this does is it gives them a tool to say, well, okay, I gotta push through this, right? right? So what if somebody does say, you know, I am struggling with my mental health, I am depressed, I am, I do have suicidal thoughts, because having this conversation at my table last night, that's what came out from oh. someone. And we were all like, whoa. Wow, good. And so, uh, but where do you direct somebody like that to? And we said, what could have helped that person? And they said, well, mainly that they feel alone. People yes. feel yeah. incredibly alone. Yes, well, one of the things that Talinda and I are working on, and we hope to announce it in the fall, is a very important part of the 320 Changes Direction. That's what brought us together. We're working to create a technology, technologically-based opportunity for people to go and, and get information, not feel alone, get connected in real time. It doesn't exist today. These, we, can, we can refer people but there isn't always a place for them to go, and there are silos, and part of what we're trying to do is to create that kind of network of networks so that people can get care and support. We have hotlines, we work with the crisis text line. So where if somebody is feeling alone now, where do they call, what do they do? If they're in crisis, they should definitely call text the crisis text line. Okay, so let's, so they, if you feel alone, if you feel you can't talk to someone, if you feel shame and stigma, which is totally normal, yes. totally and very common, call a crisis hotline. Well, the cri if you go to givenhour.org or okay. changedirection.org, you will see the, the information to reach the crisis text line. It's all done by texting. Okay. Wonderful service now available So go to changedirection.org or givenhour.org and text your feeling yes. and you will find someone Absolutely. that communicates back yes. to you, yes. right? Yes. That's very important. It's very important. Okay, so then know these five signs. Try to ign you know, uh, ignite a conversation, whether it's in the workplace or at home. Start talking to your kids at a very young yes, age about yes. their mental health. Yes. Right? Give them, give them words to put with their feelings. Give us Help. an example. Uh, just understanding the, these, these signs, feeling agitated, feeling irritated, um, you wanting, to, you know, wanting to feel um, alone and to yeah. isolate themselves. Uh, my little ones know that, which is amazing. That's it's really amazing, and I, you know, their therapist is teaching them that. I'm learning from them. I'm learning from this, but I mean, I didn't know those those words. Of course, I knew the basics ones. You know, yeah. I'm mad or I'm happy or, but there, right. are, there are more in depth feelings because we're human, right? You know, and and I was having a conversation with a family member the other day, and she said to me, one of the things that I've said that really resonated with her, that just stuck with her, is understanding that um, just like we all have physical health, we all have mental health. Right. And if we don't take care of our physical health, at some point we'll become physically ill. Yes. Right? If we don't take care of our mental health, at some point we'll become mentally ill. Now, whether that's a lifetime of mental illness, something, you know, that, that sticks with us, or whether it's a temporary moment in time, it, it, it's bound to happen. And so I just wanted to repeat that because that stuck with her. Hopefully it'll stick with somebody else. It sticks with me. I know that for sure. How has becoming uh, an activist, using um, a really personal story and a personal tragedy, how has that changed your life and has it helped you? It absolutely has helped me, 100%. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yes. Um, it's changed my life um, because it's one of my biggest motivating factors for doing this is because I don't want my husband's death to be in vain. If his yeah. death can save one life, then it can make a little bit more sense to me, and more importantly to my children. My husband lived a beautiful life, beautiful life. His music spoke volumes. Um, still speaks. Still speaks, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, he was a wonderful person, wonderful father, the best father, um, the best husband, best friend, and it, it pains my heart to think that he'll only be remembered for the way he passed. So I feel like I have to change that. Like if he's remembered for how he passed, then, then then I want him to be also remembered for sparking a movement, for sparking talk. 
Well, he's also being remembered for you. Mm -hmm. He's being remembered for what you're doing and how you are changing the direction mm -hmm. of the conversation, how you are, quote, making him proud. That was kind of a, a hashtag, yes. right? Yes. Make Chester proud by talking about this, by talking to someone else mm -hmm. about it. How tough is it? You've been in this space for quite some mm -hmm. time. Are you noticing a difference? Are you noticing people are more open to having this conversation? Uh, mental health is a hard thing to kind of, quote, be proud of or, you we, know. We are seeing it. And one of the things that happens, which is amazing, so, so when I go out and talk in communities, mm -hmm. I typically will say at some point during the talk, if there's anyone here sitting in the room who hasn't been touched by mental health or addiction, you or someone you love, raise your hand. Now I know what's going to happen. No one does, ever. No one ever raises their hand. But the cool thing that happens is that people look around and they realize for the first time, it's not just me. It's not just my family. And then they stand up and they talk one after another after another. And you would think maybe this is only young people that are mm -hmm. kind of, which they get it very easily if we help them. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's our generation. It's all generations. It's like somebody said to me when we were building this three years ago, right. when you do this, there is going to be a collective exhale in our country yeah. that people are going to finally be able to say, yep, in my family too. Depression. Right. I grew up with depression. My mom, my mother was schizophrenic. I mm -hmm. never talked about her. For 40 years I didn't talk about it. So we all have parts of our own past. Yes, we are seeing a relief, a release, and a desire to share, especially when somebody knows I care about you and I need to help you. So some people don't, and this is something that I myself have learned as I've gone along that, you know, mental health often gets talked about in terms of addiction, mm -hmm. right? And then people go like, oh, well, I'm not an addict, so I'm not in that space. Mm -hmm. And then somebody will say, well, depression, they're like, oh, well, I may be depressed, but I don't have a mental health problem. <laughs> and so everybody <laughs> has kind of got, you know, this little section. And when you speak about mental health and well-being, and well-being, yes. what are you, what are you putting under that umbrella? It, it, in a way, it's sort of what I think Talinda said it beautifully. It's we take care of our physical health so right, that we, right. you know, are physically healthy in all areas. It's the same with mental health because we all have genetic predispositions. We all do, whether it's to run a little anxious or to have a little depression or ADD or OCD or schizophrenia. And so whatever we can do to be aware of ourselves, aware okay. of our people we love, talk about it, do things to keep ourselves. That's the flip side of the card, is know the healthy habits. I don't care what they are for you, but we want you to know what yours are. Yeah. Right, Me right. Whether it's meditation or yoga or therapy or gardening or running, things that keep us emotionally well and healthy, checking in with others, talking. We know those things work. We want people to do them, and we know that it will lead to a healthier communities and healthier people. And so you're going to have a big conference in the fall. You're also yes. going to have a big concert in yes. honor of your husband, or in honor. And are, how's that going? And people all going to come and talk about their <laughs> mental health and mental well-being. Well, this is my first rodeo. With this, so I think Barbara, <laughs> Dr. Barbara can speak more to it. So yeah. we're doing our second global summit on mental health culture change. It's all about how do we change the culture. Right. We did one in LA last year. This year in October is in London. Right. We're partnering with the Ministry of Defense. We're working with the Royal Foundation. Right. And it'll be a three days of conversations and panels. And then the last night, the London mm -hmm. Palladium, we're doing a special concert. To Linda and I are hosting that together. And we'll have artists performing and, and influencers stepping on stage to say why they're talking about this now. That's very important. So people will come up and talk about their own yes. mental well-being, their yes. own mental health, their own... Uh, emotional well-being and their journeys and their recovery and their healing because it's all part of the human condition and we're all in this together so we should talk about it so I, I want to just reiterate uh, it's the campaign to change direction you can go to that campaign to change direction dot org give an hour dot org if you're a therapist or by the way just take that as give an hour uh, to a friend we're gonna post the know the five signs and then the back of the card says healthy habits of emotional well-being. So this is a really good conversation to have. I'd also as a parent, your kids end up, you know, with these computers, mm -hmm. end up isolated 
in a room very often. Yes. And, and uh, so it's kind of hard to know, like, is that normal? What's normal? I have a conversation so often with parents who are going, I don't even know anymore what's, quote, normal. Mm -hmm. When a kid gets isolated or wants to be on a video game or, you know, just in their room, is that something that I should be aware of, concerned about? Is that depression? You know, the signs are, are kind of murky for a lot well, of us. I think for as a child psychologist, yeah. one thing I always share with parents is you know your kids. If you right. feel like you don't know them, and I don't care what age they are, if you feel like you're not connected to them emotionally, right. something is not right. And that means either you aren't as present as you need to be, because sometimes they're trying. They're trying to reach you. Right. And maybe you're busy and we all putting on the phone, exactly. put down the phone, exactly. put down the phone. Put down or the phone. maybe it's them and and it's okay to push on that. If your kid gets mad at you, mom, leave me alone, then you can say, Well, here's why I'm not. I love you, here's what I see, I don't understand this, help me so that I get out of your space. That's really will. good. I like that. So repeat that. That's really good. So if a kid pushes back up against you, mm -hmm. leave me alone. You the tools are I love you, yes. I care about you, this is what I feel. And this is what I see. And this is what I see. And this is why I'm talking to you. So help me understand A, B, and C, and then I'll back out, and then, you know, but I always am gonna check in with you. And kids want that. They yeah, wanna know. With 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 my, my kids, I try to spend 10 minutes a day doing only what they want. And 10 minutes may not sound like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I try to spend more, but at least 10 minutes doing only what they want to do and that is magical it is magical. that is magical yes. to have their undivided attention for them to have my undivided uh, for attention for them to have your undivided so, attention so i mean you may see me out front doing cartwheels or <laughs> jumping on a trampoline or it's just whatever they want to do um you know for as long as i can do it but i tell myself at least 10 minutes a day so these are, I mean, they've said a lot of really valuable things. As I said, if you feel like you're alone, if you feel like you're in crisis, you can go, obviously, to the, to the website. You can go and, you know, start uh, communicating with a crisis counselor. You can follow their work at uh, the Campaign to Change Direction. You can get the five steps. You can give an hour. You can look at your uh, hand and just, like, think about the five steps and check in with yourself. Yep. Uh, on the five steps in your own life. How are you doing? Uh, if you feel like somebody isn't talking to you, uh, think about your hand and then pick up the phone and try to call someone, try to text someone. And the other thing I think is really so important is that um, using your voice uh, to create change, to move humanity forward, that's the definition of an architect of change. And you might not have thought of yourself <laughs> that way, but it's really such a great public service, what you're doing. Thank you. And um, stay the course. Thank you. Stay the I course, will. because it's really important, and there's so many millions of people who benefit, and you have, I'm for sure, saved more. Uh, than um, one life and for sure make Chester proud. Thank you very so, much. So um, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a delight. I hope we will continue yes. to connect, not through social, <laughs> but <laughs> actually Absolutely. in person. But here's a great example um, of just putting something out there. You responded. We've tried to stay uh, connected and now to meet you. And this is a space that I feel really strongly about. So anytime, come back thank and you, um, you. really applaud. And thank you so much for starting our week off. Thank in you, the Jim. right direction. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a Thank great you. week. Thank you.